almost zapped by a laser gun. By the way, what is a laser and how does it work? What's a laser beam? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's actually a very special kind of light beam. But unlike the light from a torch, which spreads out as you go further away from it, a laser beam is very intense light that stays together. That word laser is interesting. In fact, every letter of it stands for another word. It stands for light amplification, that's getting bigger, by stimulated emission of radiation. And that probably doesn't help, me, help you much at all, does it? Let's have a look at a diagram and see if we can understand what that means. There are many different kinds of lasers, but the one I'm going to show you has a glass tube that's filled with two gases. Helium, first of all, there are lots and lots of atoms of helium in there. They're too small to see, but if we can see them, let's pretend they look like that. And also atoms of another gas called neon. So we'll represent those by the red dots. Now, energy is passed into that tube from a source of electricity, and what that does, first of all, is it gets the helium atoms very excited. They, in turn, get the neon atoms excited, and they give out light. Now, at each end of the tube, there's a mirror, so the light starts bouncing backwards and forwards between the mirrors. Backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, all the time building up, and eventually, it goes out through the second mirror, which is not an ordinary mirror, but a half-silvered or a see-through mirror. And so, that beam of very intense light goes out that end, and that's the laser beam. All right, here's the gadget, here. The tube itself is very delicate, so it's inside a metal box. Here's the power source over here, so I'm going to switch it on by pushing that switch down, and now the laser beam is coming out the end. You might say, I can't see a thing. All right, let's hold a piece of cardboard there and see if we notice anything. Aha, there it is, a little dot of red light, which you can just see. Watch what happens when I take the cardboard further away. It seems to stay the same size. And in fact, that's one of the most important things about the laser beam. It doesn't spread out like the torch beam. You can't see the beam of light yet, though, can you? But if we take some smoke, maybe we can make that light come visible. Here's a smoking piece of paper. We'll hold it underneath the beam. And the smoke particles make the laser beam visible. There it is, a long, straight red line stretching out from the end of the laser tube itself. And that laser beam acts like any other beam of light. You can reflect it. If I take this mirror, I can reflect the laser beam back towards the laser tube itself. All I can see is a little red dot on that mirror. If I take a second mirror and position it here, I can actually make the laser beam go backwards and forwards several times between the two mirrors. So that when we place the smoking piece of paper underneath the, the space between the mirrors and lower the lights once again, we can see not one beam of laser light, but several. Now that's a, a laser beam, and uh, I don't know about death rays, but laser beams can certainly be used for very many important functions, such as drilling holes through metal, if they're very powerful laser beams. Very delicate surgery on parts of the body, such as the eye. They can also be used for creating three-dimensional images, holograms, for transmitting radio and television signals over large distances. And they can also be used to create new forms of art, laser light. I want to know. Curiosity.